Hi, I'm Jilly Bean Fitzhenry, and I'm one of the past presidents of the Society of Decorative Painters. And I would love to have you paint along with me as I show you this wonderful, easy to learn project. Even if you've never picked up a brush before, I guarantee you can do this piece. Uh, this piece was designed by a wonderful artist named Chris Thornton Deason, and she does beautiful work. And this is such an easy project, I just can't wait to get started showing you. Now, you can download the instructions and the pattern from the website, so make sure that you do that and you can paint right along with me. To begin with, the supplies that you need are uh, a foam brush, about a one inch foam brush. You're gonna use that to paint a clay flower pot. So we're gonna turn this ordinary, pretty boring clay flower pot into something very exciting in a short period of time. You'll also need some little foam uh, makeup sponges and we'll use this to dab some of the paint on. You'll need some quilters tape, which is about a quarter inch thick, and we're going to use that to um, section off the stripes. You will also need um, a pencil and a stylus. And if you don't have a stylus, you could use the pencil for that part of the project as well. Um, you'll need some graphite paper, some see-through transfer paper, a palette or a plastic plate to put your paint on, some paper towel, and five pretty colors, a dark brown, a medium turquoise, a kind of a yellow green, and a dark yellow green, and an off white. And you can use any paints to do this with. You also will want to get some type of a sealer and follow the instructions for the sealer before you start your flower pot. Okay, so the first step, whenever you're working on a clay pot, usually most of them these days are coming pretty smooth, but if you have any little rough spots, you can take a little piece of sandpaper and just gently sand any rough area off. You will want to coat the entire pot, the whole inside, the outside, even the little opening of the holes down inside with some type of a sealer before you get started. Then you'll start base coating the entire pot with an off-white color. And I have that off-white color on my little piece of demonstration paper here, so I will be working on there today. But let me just put a little bit out on my palette so that you can see. And these, you do want to shake these up because sometimes they will settle a little bit in the bottom, so shake them up and squeeze them out onto either a paper plate or a palette. And then you're gonna use your one inch foam brush to completely base coat your entire flower pot. And it's gonna take a few coats. It may take two or three coats. You wanna let it dry quickly in between. And you can use a hair dryer to help speed up the drying time so you don't have to wait. So you'll just go through and just paint the entire pot with your off-white color. And any color is going to work just fine. Okay, then uh, the next step will be to section off the pot. Now your uh, instructions give you very clear step-by-step -step so that uh, you can follow that as well. But when you look at the original piece here, you'll notice that there's stripes in the background behind the leaves. And that's what I'm going to be showing you next. I take um, and I'm going to section off the stripes and I've just used this quilters tape to tape uh, stripes in the front of the pot and you'll notice that I made one end small and one end larger. The top of the pot you might want to use a, a ruler if you want to be exact. You can use a ruler and you can section off uh, maybe make it like two inches at the very top and about an inch and a quarter at the bottom. Okay, then I will start with my brown paint, any color of dark brown. This is really a wonderful contemporary looking piece. It will go great in many, many, many homes. And I have this little foam sponge and I just kind of dab it into the dark 
color. Now, I want to get some of the extra off because I don't want to use it too heavy when I'm doing these stripes. It's better to go ahead and have a little less on so you don't get paint leaking underneath the tape. And you'll notice I'm just pouncing, kind of dabbing this brown on, and I just go the entire length of the stripe, add more brown as you run out, just try not to get too much on there. You don't want great big globs. And it might take a couple coats of this. So first I'll go through and I'll do all of the brown. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to do all of the medium teal. So we'll shake that up. There again, I'm just going to use the sponge. And maybe I'll use the shorter end this time so I can get into the smaller area. Dab off the extra onto the palette and just gently dab in between to get the other color. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to pull off a little piece of tape here in a second to show you what it does. Okay, let's dab some down here even. And just take your time. Go ahead and pounce that in there. Okay. Now, once I get the entire piece, all the color filled in, then I'm going to gently just pull the tape off, and you'll see then I have these nice edges to work with. Now, I would have done more coats on here, but there we go. See, it gives you a nice, clean stripe to the edge. Okay, so once you get those first colors done, and I have another board here that shows this already has my brown and it has the two uh, dark or medium turquoise, then you want to tape off some more at another angle and do the same thing again. Go ahead and dab your teal in so that you get some stripes going at different angles to create a little bit more interest. And it's going to go over the brown area as well. And you may even want to put a stripe going up just slightly off center from the middle of your brown. Dab that in. There again, you'll be able to remove the, the tape afterwards, and then you'll have these nice stripes to work with. Now, you do want to let that dry before you go on to the next step. So a hair dryer works great to help speed up the drying time. Okay, now you're going to take your pattern. And you've got your pattern on your printout here. And you're going to take your tracing paper and you're going to put it over your pattern. Then you'll take your pencil and you're going to trace over the lines so that you'll have a pattern to work with. And you just need the basic outlines, and it doesn't have to be perfect. These are actually just kind of little wiggly, wavy leaves. No two are exactly the same. Once you've got your pattern traced, you're going to take and you're going to put it onto your flower pot. Now, the um, pattern can eat, the leaves can either hang down from the top of the flower pot, or they can grow up from the bottom. Either way is fine. You'll put a little piece of tape onto the paper, tape it onto your pot. You're going to take some graphite paper or some choco paper, and you'll put that underneath your pattern, and then use your stylus. Now, the reason we recommend a stylus over a pencil is you get a nice, clean, sharp, thin line, where with a pencil, it'll be a little bit thicker line, but it'll work in a pinch also. And I'm going to trace right over the lines so that I transfer my design onto my project. And when I pull that away, you can see how I've got a design underneath there. Okay. Then the next step will be to base coat those leaves in. And I'm going to be using a mixture of my green and my off-white. So I'll take out some of my medium green, and I'm going to use um, a number eight 
flat shader. Now, whenever you have a brand new brush like this, you always want to rinse it in water first. When brushes are made, they are shipped with what's called a sizing in them. It's a little type of a glue that helps keep them protected during shipping. You want to rinse that out and blot your brush on a paper towel. So I'm going to rinse the brush in a water bowl and I'm going to blot it on my paper towel. Okay, now another thing, let's start with really good brush habits to begin with. Never leave your brush sitting in a water bowl upside down like this. It's going to bend the bristles. Always rinse it and then lay it down so that you don't bend the bristles. You want to keep your brushes for a long time. I'm going to mix the off-white and the medium green. And let me pull that a little closer just so that you can see what I'm doing here. So I've got, it's about half and half. So I just took a little scoop of the off-white, a little scoop of the green, and mixed those two together to get my leaf color. And that's what I'm going to use to paint in my leaves. And I want to kind of dab the extra paint off on my palette so that I don't get too much when I'm working on the leaves. And just go ahead and if you can pull nice even strokes all the way from one end to the other, filling in your leaves, kind of soften any ridges that you might get that way. And just fill those leaves in, but try to pull nice, long, continuous strokes It'll give you a nice, smooth surface. All of the leaves can be done with the number 8 shader or a flat brush. Sometimes they call it a flat brush, sometimes they call it a shader, but it's the same thing. And then once I get all those done, then I can also do my stems. Now my stems I can actually do either with the chisel edge, which is the skinny tips of this brush, or I can switch to a number one script brush. So let me show you with this brush first. What you would do is you would just get up on the very top or tips of the brush and pull so that you could fill in those stems. Okay. I'm going to rinse my brush. I never want to leave the paint sitting in my brush. Always want to rinse that out before you set it down so that it doesn't um, get stuck to the bristles. Now this is a script brush. This is a number one script brush. And there again I want to wet it because it's a brand new brush. I blot it on my paper towel. And then I'm going to load that with this color. So that was the medium green and the off-white. Now, once I get that on the brush, to make sure that I have um, not great big globs on there, that it's nice and smooth, I'm going to gently just kind of roll it between my fingers on the palette, and that gets rid of all the excess. Now, when I go to use this brush, if I just barely touch with the tip, I'll get a skinny line. If I apply a lot of pressure, I get a fat line. So for the stems, you want to get a thin line. So you're just going to carefully, with, not, with a very little pressure, just kind of fill in those stems. Okay? And I'll rinse my brush. And I've got these leaves are already dry, so they're all set to go for the shading. Now for the shading, I want to show you how to float color. Now what I mean by floating color, that is how we shade and highlight. Okay, so I switch back to the shader brush. And I'm going to take just a little corner of that darker green or the medium green and get it on the cor very corner of the brush. So half of the brush has paint and the other half has no paint. Okay, let's see if this color shows up. I'm going to use this to separate all of my leaves 
And so I'm going to pull right next to every, any leaf that happens to be underneath another one. Reload as often as you need to. Separate those leaves. Okay, and you're also going to want to put some at uh, the base or the, the bottom of the leaves where they touch into the stem. It's just a quick, easy way to shade. Okay. All right. So, rinse your brush. Uh, your brushes, when you're all done with your project, you want to clean them out good with some soap and water. Any type of soap you have at your sink is great. There's also lots of brush cleaners out on the market for acrylic paints that are wonderful as well. Okay, so let's take a closer look at uh, the original piece. You can see that um, it has the leaves. Let's see, this one. This one has the leaves growing from the bottom up. But when you look at your pattern, or if you look at the pieces behind me, you'll notice that one of them has the leaves growing from the top down. Then you can be very creative with these flower pots. You can turn them into a planter. You could take the bottom of the flower pot and paint it and turn it upside down, put it on top, and add a little wooden knob here, glue that on uh, to create a little canister. You could take the cover and add candles in it. So there's three really fun projects that you can create with this Learn to Paint Contemporary Terracotta Makeover. So I hope that I've encouraged you and shown you how easy it is. Um, oh, one last thing. You do want to seal your flower pot afterwards. Uh, use any type of a water-based varnish or there's lots of varnishes that can, um, in your arts and crafts stores that you can use. Just make sure that it recommends that it's okay to use over acrylic paint and seal both the inside and outside of the flower pot if you're going to use it as a planter. That way, no water will seep into the porous um, terracotta pot itself and create the um, paint to peel or chip off. So as long as everything is sealed, Top to bottom, you're good to go. So I hope I've encouraged you to try painting this wonderful project. Please check from time to time for other new Learn to Paint projects on the Society of Decorative Painters website. And I hope to see you in class someday.